Well, what a week it has been. The 1998 Arctic Winter Games here in Yellowknife. But many of the athletes were so busy competing they never had a chance to see themselves on TV. Well, now is that chance. We dedicate this program to all the athletes who came from the circumpolar region in the spirit of sport and friendship. So let's grab some popcorn, put up your feet, and let's watch the Arctic Winter Games of 1998. Ladies and gentlemen, the real reason why we're here, the athletes of the 1998 Arctic Winter Games. The Arctic Winter Games got off to a great start. There are seven contingents participating this year. Just over 1,700 athletes are taking part in sports and cultural events. We should probably mention that in 2000, uh, Whitehorse is going to be the host of the Games. The Yukon has one of the largest contingents with just over 300 athletes. The ever-powerful Alaskans were here in full force. And that's here for Northern Alberta! Alberta is the southernmost participant in the Games. Only communities above the 55th parallel can take part. Greenland is the world's largest island. They have participated since 1972 when the games were held in Whitehorse. The Russian contingent gets bigger every year. It's the first time the Russians have sent a peewee hockey team to play in the games. But it was the arrival of Team NWT that many people were anticipating. The last time you will see this team compete together, a home team for West Territory. the torch and raising of the flag officially kicked off the 15th Arctic Winter Games. The energy was high as the competition for the medals began. It is a closely matched game between NWT and Alaska. In the junior female division, Alaska took the first game in the round robin beating NWT 15-11. The NWT team, making up of players mainly from Ray Edzo, fought hard, but the final round went to Alaska, 15 to 10. Magadan in red and Alaska faced off against each other in Kiwi hockey action. It was the first chance the Alaskan team got to see what the Magadan Kiwis were made of. They may have been somewhat smaller in size, but they played one heck of a hockey game. Meg Dan tied Team Alaska 3-3. The traditional Danny sports competition calls on the instinct of the hunter. 
agility, cunning, and brute strength can all be an advantage out in the bush. Brute strength was the front and center of Dene Games competition in Delon today. Let's go, Snooky Catholic is go. there. <laughs> Snooky. Thanks, Paul. The pull push competition has got to be one of the toughest in the Dene sports category. It's very much like tug of war, except it's backwards. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. Come in, Good. One, two, three, push! Go, 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 go. The object of this sport is to try and push the opposing team right out of the circle. Traditionally, sports like this were developed to keep the endurance up for those times when it would be needed to survive in the north. Three teams are competing, Alaska, the Yukon, and the Northwest Territories. This is a sport which will determine the strength of each team. It's a skill and a bit of determination. One, two, three, push! <laughs> Alaska has held the goal in this event for four straight years. Straight forward. Give it your you best. Give it your best. Yukon and NWT will try and break this record. Yukon will not be getting the gold medal this year. Edwin McGinty has tried since this category was first introduced to bring home the gold. This will not happen today, but he has other plans. Oh yeah, I'm going to get a massage right after this. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> now it's up to the NWT to break Alaska's hold on the gold. One, two, three, four! Push! Go! Go! In a sport like this, it's not surprising that muscles get a little overworked. It's all in the spirit and the injury is minor. NWT will make one last effort for the gold. Once again, Alaska takes home the gold. Feels good. A lot of pressure. Keep winning every year. CBC North. Red, white, dynamite! Sports, sports, sports. That's the main reason for these games. And so far, the competition has not disappointed at all. <laughs> Here are some highlights from Monday night and Tuesday. The Alberta Junior women's team took the lead over Greenland early in the game. By the second half, they were well on their way to victory. Northern Alberta has a good chance of battling it out with Alaska for the gold Ulu. The final score, 15-2, 15-2. Meanwhile, in the junior men's competition, Team NWT took control of the game over Team Yukon right from the start. They move on to play Northern Alberta. That could prove to be a tough match to win. So far, Northern Alberta remains unbeaten. Team NWT beat Team Yukon 15-3, 15-2.
There were three very intense games of soccer last evening, beginning with a juvenile men's category. UConn took on NWT. Minutes into the game, UConn was in the lead with two points. NWT came on strong with Lonnie Erasmus scoring the first point for his team. The game tied at three goals at the end of the first half. UConn tried their best for a comeback, but they lost the game. It was 7-3 for the NWT. It was an evenly matched game in the junior men's event. Tempers flared at times. There were minor injuries. NWT was in the lead for the first half at 1-0. But Alaska was determined to win this game. NWT eventually tied at third goal. Attempts to break the tie failed for both sides. Finally, into the last minute, Alaska made their fourth goal. It was 4-3 for Alaska. There were no shortage of fans for the second game. In the junior women's event, NWT competed against Alaska in this very high energy game. NWT was first to get on the scoreboard, but they were no match for Team Alaska. At the end of the first half, it was four to one. NWT finally made their second goal, but Alaska rebounded by making their ninth goal. Alaska took this game without any problems, nine to two. The Alaska Junior Men's Curling Team got off to a promising start today against Team Alberta. After the first end, they led by three. After that, Alberta dominated every end. Final score, 10-3. Alberta moves on to play the Yukon, and Alaska plays the NWT. In junior women's, UConn and NWT were tied until the fourth end. UConn pulled ahead in the fifth and held the lead over Team NWT. Final score, UConn 9, NWT 5. Tomorrow, the UConn moves on to play Alberta and the NWT plays Alaska. almost two days of competition. And here is the medal count. Loopy, this is not a medal, but for being such a good sport, we'll give you a CBC pin. A small but enthusiastic crowd gathered on beautiful Back Bay this morning for the beginning of the dog mushing competition. Dogs and dog fashion were everywhere. Eight teams entered this year's 7.5 kilometer juvenile co-ed race. Ten-year-old Jordy McQueen has been dog mushing since she was three years old. She's won numerous competitions, but this is her first Arctic Winter Games. It's clear how much she loves dogs and dog mushing. His name's Fifty. <coughs> He's my favorite dog out of the, my dog, all my fifty dogs. You have fifty dogs? Yeah, around there. Jordy's grandfather, Danny McQueen, was a well-known dog musher. He was a five-time Canadian champion between 1963 and 1967. His record has never been broken. Sadly, he passed on earlier this year. My grandpa was a really good um, dog sled racer. He, we didn't have dogs for a while when I was a little kid, but then he got some dogs and he got us into dog racing. So if it wasn't for my grandpa, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today. 
Jordy's father, Scott, worries about her on the trail. As long as she has nice, nice clean runs and uh, no falls, it's a fairly slick trail. And so um, you know, there was an accident earlier in the week with uh, a young girl from the Yukon who broke her collarbone. And so it's, I'm kind of nervous about that accidents like that with Jordy being only 10. Jordy does have a safe run and she places seventh. Definitely not a personal best, but there will be other races. Yeah, it's been a good run. I thought I was going to fall off for sure on that, on that um, turn, it was a really sharp turn, but my sled just swung around. It was like, gonna, it's going to hit the bank, but then I just turned really fast and I didn't hit the bank. She may not have won a gold medal today, but that doesn't deter her from her ultimate dream. I'm trying to follow my grandpa's footsteps. I want to try the Iditarod. That's a really long race in Alaska. If you want to try a tough sport at the Arctic Winter Games, you don't have to look any farther than the airplane. Competitors are carried in a straight line over a set course in this position. They only have one shot at it and there's no doubt it hurts. This was Alaskan Gary Hill's attempt. You the nurse? Wesley Anukshuk from the Northwest Territories tried next. Tell me what you were feeling there, Wesley. How does it feel? Uh, it's really painful. What's the worst part? Uh, the, when you're flying, your shoulder parts. It really hurts. It was the Russian athletes from Magadan who flew the farthest in the airplane competition on this night. Denis Sapozhnikov took the bronze. Okay. Ivan Avtonov won the silver on his attempt. Stop. And Igor Ayeni took the gold Ulu. Ayani's flight, 24 feet, 11 inches, well off the record of over 160 feet. Arctic Sports MC Ernie Bernhardt says a change in the rules for these games accounts for the big difference. The way the airplay was done in previous games is that uh, the packers, the three people who were doing the packing of the participants who were doing the airplane, were grabbing the uh, participant by the wrist. And it made it a lot easier for uh, the competitor to go at a further distance. But now, uh, with the knowledge and the wisdom of our elders, they said you must uh, place your, your hands on, under the fist of each competitor. Therefore, that's the way they were used to doing it. And that's why you see such a big difference in uh, the previous games as compared to tonight's game that we just saw. Gold winner Igor Ayani was happy with his effort nonetheless. It's of course difficult and it hurts a little bit but at the end, but he likes it. What parts of your body hurt the most right now? In the shoulders. Ivan, why did the Russians do so well in this? Because they got used to the severe life. 
And what aspect of the severe life prepared you for this? Какой аспект этой суровой жизни приучили вас? Климат, наверное. Ну, наверное, климат наш чукос северный. The northern climate of Chukotka. That's the name of their region. This is the first time these Russians have competed in the airplane, and they pulled off the sweep after having practiced the event for only one day. Team NWT took the gold medal in the junior girls' 1,500-meter speed skating competition. NWT was favored to win, and they didn't let anyone down. It's no surprise given that Yellowknife has one of the largest speed skating clubs in the country. Sophia Pinn and Megan Monroe take gold and silver respectively, and Wendy Garrett of Alberta takes the bronze ulu. NWT also dominated the junior boys competition. It was a race between teammates Michael Demko and Connor McGreesh. Demko beat McGreesh by two one hundredths of a second. It was a close race for third when this happened. No one was hurt and Alberta's Luke Lebrecht finished the race in third place, taking home the bronze medal. The final medal round for junior boys and girls sprint ski biathlon were held this morning. The favorite to win was Team Chumin from Russia. Russia is a country known for its biathlon athletes. Strong skiing and expert shooting are definitely an advantage in this sport. Chumin took the gold and silver in the junior female competition, and Alaska took the bronze. In the junior male, Chumin again took gold and silver, with Alaska taking the bronze. Russell Lenz from the Yukon coming to the finish right now. Looking strong, looking strong. So many volunteers, so many medals. Every contingent has a chance to take a medal home from these games. So far, let's see who has the biggest haul. Games is going to be happening and it's one of the most colorful and exciting. It's the one people like to watch and I know you've played before. And I have a lot of fun with it. Well, we'll start off today with a quick lesson on hand games and then we'll get into the games. The energy was extremely high at the Dilo Gym this afternoon with the hand games competition. The spirit of the drum was definitely present and the participating athletes were engulfed by its power. You may find this game confusing, but really it is quite simple. Look at it as a guessing game. The game consists of two teams, 12 sticks, a token and a ton of energy. Each team takes a turn to hide their tokens. The opposing team tries to guess which hand the token is in by using one of a variety of hand signals. The players will try and outwit their opponents with some dramatic body movements. When a call is made, the players must show both hands. For every unsuccessful guess, the opponent must give the player one stick. They must be successful at guessing all the tokens from each player before they get their turn. When a team has taken all the sticks, the last and final 12 stick determines which team will start the next game. The game is over when a team wins all 12 sticks twice. 
The spirit of the drum is with Team Yukon. They take the first game against Alaska, then they went on to beat the Northwest Territories in the second round. In this competition, Yukon wins the gold Ulu, Alaska takes home the silver, and the bronze goes to the Northwest Territories. A traditional Dene drum dance is now underway at the gym. You couldn't pack many more people into the gymnasium at Sisson School last night. This standing room only crowd came to watch the finals of one of the toughest and most difficult of the Arctic sports, the Alaskan high kick. They weren't disappointed, especially with the action in the open women's category. Mika McDonald of the Northwest Territories hits five feet eight with this kick. That earned her the gold ulu. But McDonald kicks again, this time in an effort to break her own world record. Here she takes aim at 5'11. <laughs> what would happen. So that's what happened. Uh, you must be just giddy right now. I am. I'm just like, I've, been tr I've tried that record too hard to keep the games in a row. Uh, right now. It just feels so good. Congratulations. Congratulations. That was a good job. Yeah. The competitors in the open men's competition put on a good show too. The NWT's Wesley Inukshuk had the added incentive of performing in front of his parents who'd flown in from Rankin Inlet. He goes for seven feet on this attempt. And when Alaska's Richard Ignati barely missed on this kick, Inukshuk won the gold. How was it today kicking in front of all these people? Uh, it was okay until the last attempt was, it was getting nervous. Was it good to have your parents here watching you? Did you get any strength from your parents? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean to you to have your parents here? It means a lot to me, because um, I don't know, it just means a lot to me. In the junior boys category, Eric Ambutinoir of the Northwest Territories won the gold ulu with a kick of six feet two inches. He ended up kicking as high as six six. Not bad for the shy teenager from Pelly Bay in his first year in Arctic sports. That was quite a kick, Eric. How did you do it? I've been practicing a while. Uh, it takes time to practice uh, sometimes. Alaska's Amanda Hayano walked away with the gold ulu in the junior girls category. That was the head pull, the next event in the Arctic sports. Thanks, Bradley. Now, if you want to see how it's really done, watch these athletes. Go. And there was this battle between Russian Ivan Avtonov and Johnny Isaluk of the Northwest Territories. Isaluk now has to take on his Northwest Territories teammate Charlie Komuaktuk for the gold ulu. Oh. Komuaktuk says this was the one competition of the games he was focusing on. There's a lot of determination and concentration. You didn't lose once through the whole tournament, did you? No, I was getting all ready up and this is the game I wanted to win most. I'm Elias Abood at the 1998 Arctic Winter Games. One of the things that has always made the Arctic Winter Games different has been the wide range in age of the competitors. But uh, that could change in the year 2000 if the rumor is true to sideline athletes over 18. As John Tracy of Channel 2 News tells us, there isn't much support for the idea from the Alaskan contingent. <laughs> The 
kids have always been the biggest part of the Arctic Winter Games. Great uniforms, Team Alaska. But they're not the only part. Of the 1,600 athletes at these games, about 10% are adults. The coach of Team Alaska's men's volleyball team, Eric Heine, won a gold ulu at the games four years ago. Volleyball is one of just a handful of sports that still allow adults. This is Jim Wallace's first games, and it will likely be his last. The game's governing board says it has no choice but to spike the adults because the games are simply getting too big for many northern cities to handle. And it believes the experience of the games leaves a bigger impression on those with fewer experiences. But don't tell that to Joel Hubbard. Hubbard is Alaska's oldest competitor at these games. He's not as fast as he used to be, but many of the adults say speed is not everything. And the adults are finding their greatest support in a place you'd least expect it. The kids say the games just won't be the same without their mentors. We've learned so much from all the adults. There aren't many young snowshoe biathletes in Alaska. And so the old people are, or the older people are what we're learning everything from. The kids will still be able to learn from the adults. They just won't be able to race with them. For Joel Hubbard and a lot of his colleagues, Yellowknife is both their first and last shot at the Arctic Winter Games. I'm John Tracy at the 1998 Arctic Winter Games. As I said earlier, the Northwest Territories clambered up to the top of the medal standings yesterday. We'll see how they are doing today. Like these curious people about how they did in skiing, we're going to find out how the NWT did in their medal round today. As darkness fell in Yellowknife, East Rend throat singers sang and West Rend drummers played. And all to honor the Northern fashion that took center stage in the lobby of the Legislative Assembly. This two-hour show took almost a year to organize and more than 30 volunteers to make it happen. But as organizer Cynthia Cardinal says, there are even more people behind the scenes, designers and the many women who sew so beautifully in small communities in the north. You're working with um, people who are in a cottage industry and are working directly out of their homes. Uh, some of the women you know, work full time as well, uh, have families and other lives, and so they can't be doing this full time. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort on their part because, I mean, without them we wouldn't be having events like this. There were lots of items that pleased the crowd. Traditional jackets and parkas, leggings for dancing, a bridesmaid's dress and traditional ribbon dress and shirt for the children to wear at weddings. Everything was decorated with rich northern beading and embroidery, a heritage that Cynthia Cardinal thinks we should cherish. I'm for, I truly believe that it's not appreciated and it's not getting the recognition that it needs. It needs to be out there more, people need to see it, people need to understand that they're missing a great deal here and if we don't stop paying attention, it's going to go away. On the catwalk, the high points of the evening were the high dog rib wedding dresses designed by Berna Bolio. I don't know when she has time to do all this sewing and have a birthday too. But these were the guys who really stole the show. Their drum is as big as an Inuit drum, but it's made like a Dene drum. These professional dancers are from Magadan, a country on the far eastern shores of Russia, on the opposite side of the world. They call themselves Anner, and their energy and sense of fun made the audience roar with delight last night. It's the same reaction they've been getting everywhere they performed at the games this week.
Brent Beck is only 18, but he shows a lot of promise. He has a lot to live up to, being a third generation musher in a family of champions. How long have you been mushing? Before I was born. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was mushing all my life. I was brought up with dogs, so I'm right into it. Brent is racing in the 13-kilometer run today for Team NWT. He's already won a silver and a bronze medal. Today, he's hoping to place well. Brent's father, Richard, is a six-time world champion. I'm really proud of him. We've been training more for uh, for distance, and, and a lot of these guys I, I hear is, are training just strictly for Arctic Winter Games, and and, uh, and that's all. That's uh, the only race they're, they're training for. Whereas we, we got to train for everything else too. And, and Brent's father and sister Heather are handling for him today. Having a family of mushers is definitely an advantage. You learn a lot of strategies of. Uh, Keep running the dogs, and you learn things about you learn different ways, like how to train your dogs. For distance racing, how to pace them, and for short racing, how to get control so you could go full board. The team to beat is another strong mushing family from Alberta. Brent finishes the race, making good time. He is definitely in for a medal. Hey! It's a pretty tough trail. Yeah, it's a pretty good trail, but oh, it's hard, go hard going. But why Why is that? Because uh, the snow that just fell down, it leaves a big, thick layer. It just makes it nice and slick. But gets the silver medal and Alberta gets the gold. His next big challenge is to compete in the Canadian Dog Derby Championship. He wants to follow the family tradition because that's who he looks up to. Well, I look behind my grandpa and my dad, my, my uncle, all my uncles. That's who I always take, take in, take in um, notes when, I'm, when I watch them. I, I learn from them. So. I'll follow and try following their footsteps. <laughs>sure sign that things are wrapping up at the 1998 Arctic Winter Games is the knuckle hop competition. It is probably as painful as it looks, but medics are standing by to wrap up any injuries that might occur. Before we get to the knuckle hop competition, Eliza Boot is standing by with another unusual Arctic sports competition, the sled jump. Elias? You can't hold the Russian sledge jump event without sledges. There was a set already made, but Arctic sports officials needed more. So early in the day, in the boys' change room, these Russian athletes put their carpentry skills to work. They even brought their own wood and nails. It didn't take long to put the sledges in place and get down to the actual competition. The rules are simple, bunny hops over the 10 sledges. You're allowed a five second pause at each end, turn around and keep jumping. The person who jumps over the most sledges wins. And in a sport as old as the Russian hills, you'd expect the athletes from that country to do well. And they did. Just watch Alexander Tasmanov from the Tumen region. He's the world record holder with 870 jumps. This time, he took it easy. He did 602. Ну для индийских тут очень сложно прыгать, это тяжелый вид спорта. Нужно зрительно следить каждую нарту, чтобы ее не задеть. И в основном, в основном настроен на нарты. He's saying that this is a very hard sport and basically he just concentrates on the sledges and just go one after another. So he just thinks, uh, thinks of the sledges and that's how he does it. For many, it was their first shot at the event. 
Some did okay. Others had a tougher time. The Russians took gold, silver, and bronze. The best of the non-Russian jumpers was Corey Klingenberg of the NWT. He jumped 100 times in the junior boys category. Feels like I'm doing thousand two-foot jumps and maybe more. The athletes went on to compete in a sport that puts to the test muscular endurance as much as it does one's tolerance for pain. How many other sports come with their own medical tables? The knuckle hop comes from hunters imitating the movement of a seal on the ice during a hunt. Unlike the sledge jump, it was the athletes from this side of the Bering Strait who dominated in this event. Alaska's Lee McCotter lasted 84 feet, 3 inches. His raw knuckles bear the marks of his success. It'll dry up quicker. About halfway through, the oxygen runs out, so you got to start breathing really hard. By the time you get near the end of your rope, the only thing you could feel is your chest is burning from your muscles. Your chest is burning and your calves are just absolutely worn out. That's about it. You don't really feel any pain until you stop. He was followed by Jimmy Murkasak of the Northwest Territories and Alaskan Robert Lincoln. I love Loopy. With unbeatable grace and style, Team Alaska mesmerized the crowd at the Yellowknife Community Arena, dominating the competition and controlling the medal standings in the popular free skate event last night. Young Alaskan Tiffany Setters took gold in the preliminary ladies' event. Despite a strong performance by Jesse Mellencamp from the Northwest Territories. Returning for his second Arctic Winter Games, Scott Lachowski of the Northwest Territories tried to repeat his gold medal performance in Alaska. But Kevin Arnold of Team Alaska impressed the judges with the perfect routine to take the gold medal. Time after time, Alaskan skaters found themselves at the top. The team got the first and I got first in the element program. And now I got first in the long program. It's really cool. first overall. Yeah. <laughs> Little surprise that Alaska has such a strong team. Alaskan coach Rory Berghardt treated the crowd to highlights from a routine that she will be performing at the Professional World Figure Skating Championships in Spain. A professional skater for eight years, Rory captivated a small watchful audience with skills that won her the 1995 U.S. Figure Skating Championships. As competition wrapped up for these skaters, being able to watch such a performance will inspire personal hopes for many bright futures. Saturday was the last day of competition in soccer. This was the gold Ulu match between the NWT and Team Greenland in junior boys. Greenland was clearly the superior team. They beat the Northwest Territories 6-0. The gold Ulu match in junior girls was a different story. It was a high scoring back and forth battle between Greenland and the Yukon. The first half ended 3-3. But in the second half, the Yukon had a penalty shot. 
The Greenland goalie stopped the shot but couldn't handle the rebound. The Yukon scored again to make it 5-3. Greenland scored on its own penalty shot to narrow the gap. And then tied the match. After the overtime period, the game went to a shootout. And with this Greenland miss. And this gold by Yukon. The team from the Yukon won the gold Ulu. It was a beautiful day for snowshoe finals. Team Yukon dominated this event in all categories. In junior women's, Yukon took the gold and Alaska took both silver and bronze. In the open women's, Yukon again took the gold. In junior male, Team Yukon took the gold with NWT taking silver and the Alaskans taking the bronze. Followed by Tommy Pettit from Team Alaska. Tremendous effort this afternoon. Going hard now. And in the open male category, Yukon again took the gold, and Alaska took both the silver and the bronze Ulu. You're watching the Arctic Winter Games on CBC Northbeat. Hockey rules, baby. The Gold Ulu game in Pee Wee Hockey was a tough match. Team NWT was up against the Alaskan team. The Northwest Territories boys had yet to lose a game through the whole tournament. They were hoping to keep that record alive in the game that counted the most, the one for the gold. The NWT started off strongly, hoping to put the Alaskans away as fast as possible. And it looked good at the end of the first period with a 4-1 lead. From there, the NWT boys played a strong game, never allowing the Alaskan team to get back into the game. It was 6-2 at the end of two. They exchanged goals in the third period. NWT captured the gold, winning 7-3. Alberta proved the stronger team in the junior girls final volleyball match with Alaska. Alberta won the first game 15-2. In the second game, Alaska tied Alberta at one point, but Alberta fought back to win 15-7. In the final game, Alberta walked away with the win, the score 15-1. Thank you. Thank you. Alberta gets the gold medal and Alaska gets the silver. In junior boys competition, Alberta took on the Northwest Territories, Alberta took the match with the scores of 15-13, 15-7, and 15-11.